Welcome to our discussion of the variation of pressure with depth. As divers well know, water pressure increases with increasing depth. So as you go down deeper into the water, the pressure increases. Likewise, every mountaineer knows that as you climb up higher and higher in altitudes, the pressure decreases. This is the reason, for example, why when you're flying in an aircraft, the air cabins have to be pressurized because the pressure outside is quite low. So the pressure at a depth of h in meters is given by the following expression. P0, or P0, stands for the external pressure at the surface of the fluid. And this bit here is known as the hydrostatic pressure, which is due to the weight of the fluid. Let me give you a, a slightly different picture that is shown from over here on the left side. Let's consider a fish that is swimming below the surface of a lake. So it's the uh, weight of the water, this darker shaded region that I'm showing here, that is actually causing or creating this pressure at, on the fish at this depth. Let's show how we can come up with this expression that's shown here. So first we'll consider that there's this column of water with a cross-sectional area um, A that is resting above the, uh, the fish. And it's at a depth of H that the fish is at. Now also pushing on top of this water column is the air. So all of the weight of the air is pushing down and that's where this external pressure P0 comes in. So the pressure at this depth, which we'll call P, is really equal to the external pressure from all the air above this column pushing down, plus the extra additional pressure due to the weight of the fluid. And you remember that pressure equals force over area. So this we're going to write as the force divided by the area. Now that force is really the weight of all of the water in above the, the fish. So the force that on the surface at the bottom of the column, which is acting straight down here, which I'll call F, uh, is due to the weight of all of the fluid or water that is above it. The uh, weight of this fluid is calculated by using the force of gravity, which is M times G. So this is the mass of this entire fluid times G. Now the mass can be uh, rewritten because we know that the density of a fluid is mass over volume. So the mass of that fluid is equal to the density of the fluid rho times V, which is the volume of this entire column. So we're going to replace that with rho VG. But the volume of that column of fluid is really equal to the cross-sectional area A times the depth H. So let's replace that in there and we have rho A H and G. And now we could replace that weight force into the expression over here. We have the pressure at that depth is equal to the external pressure plus this weight which is rho times A times H times G and all divided by A. And you'll see that the top and the bottom, the areas can cancel out. And so we end up with the following expression, that the pressure at that depth is equal to the external pressure plus rho uh, g h. And this rho g h term is typically called the hydrostatic pressure. So that would be the pressure if we were to assume that the pressure external pressure at the surface of the water was zero, like a vacuum. Uh, but normally when you're solving problems, this external pressure here is typically um, usually a, uh, the atmospheric pressure, which can be about 1.01 .01 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals. But that can vary. So if we're just looking for the weight of the fluid that is resting above the fish, that's just this rho GH term. 
However, we're looking for the total pressure exerted on the fish due to the weight of the fluid and due to the external pressure from the air above it, then we have to include both terms. Okay, I think you're now ready to tackle on the next couple examples.